Hi everybody, it's Benita here. I am hanging out in my office at home and I'm doing my February forecast and this time I was feeling like I wanted to use, where's my box here, um, my karma cards uh, to do this month. Uh, one of the things that's really been coming up really strongly is the whole Freedom Convoy thing, the, the polarization of ideas. I think it's really up for everybody right now. Um, and it's just really coming to a head, right? People, whatever perspective you have about this, looking at, um, how, uh, how do I process how I feel about, uh, this situation? How do I want to interact with my community around this? Um, and, and so that's, that's really up right now. So what I really like with the karma cards is it speaks in sentences. So I'm just going to, can I reverse this here? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to reverse it and I'm going to show you these cards. So what I've done is I've laid out two spreads. So this one is about the situation and you can see when you reverse them, the red is about action or the orange. So what we have here is it says, so you read it from spiritual, mental, physical. So the spiritual, an unusual example of genius to experiment with your ideas. So if you think of it spiritually, if you kind of step back from the whole, um, let me find my camera here again. There we go. Um, if you, if you just kind of step back from the whole, uh, the right or the wrong, it's looking at how are we, processing our ideas. I mean, as Canadians, there's a lot of complacency normally in our society. You know, we've got it pretty good. We go about our days. We do our things. We don't worry for the most part too much about what's going on with other people if we're not directly affected by it. So this has really brought a lot of stuff to the surface because now that we're dealing with a situation that directly affects us all, it's really triggering in people those ideas. How do I feel about this situation? What do I want to do about it? So wherever you are, however you look at things, it is really causing people to give a lot of thought to what freedom means to them, how they feel about vaccinations, how they feel about this virus, how they feel about boundaries around who do I spend time with? How do I feel about masking? you know, um, interacting with people. It's caused a lot of polarity, but it's also really got people thinking about their feelings, about their beliefs, about uh, how they want to go about living their lives. So it's not, I'm not looking on it from the point of view of who's right, who's wrong. We've all got our own perspectives on these things. More just the fact that as Canadians, uh, we're no longer complacent. <laughs> We're coming out of ourselves and we're going, oh, you know, I need to look at the big picture here. I need to look at this situation and how I feel about this and how it affects me and how it affects my family, how it affects my community. So, you know, regardless of the point of view that we're on, um, it's gotten us to get excited about something and excited to take some kind of action. Um and, you know, on on both sides of the argument, you know, you've got folks saying we've got to support the medical system. We've got a lot of people working really, really hard to save a lot of lives and we can't afford to have them burn out or the system break down and then there's nobody to take care of us. And then you've got people who think uh, the vaccinations are dangerous and they're doing their best to protect their families based on what they believe. And they think that there is uh, a top-down situation going on that's oppressing them. So they truly, I'm sure a lot of them really believe that they are fighting for something that's also supposed to help the community. So, you know, that's where we get that unusual example of genius to experiment with your ideas. It's that on a spiritual level, we're having to really explore what we believe and how that affects how we interact and live in the world. So on the mental level, it says a different way of looking at the discoveries of short-term thinking 
and trips. <laughs> so let's just let's just read that again because here's there's a whole lot of people right now taking trips to participate in this thing. Um, a different way of looking at the discoveries of short-term thinking and trips. Well, this is really like a major social experiment here because you've got a whole lot of people who've been taking these big trips to go to this convoy to express themselves. There are some people with some nefarious moves on it who've done some things that kind of horrify the nation. There's other people who truly believe what they're doing is very loving and caring and, you know, think that what the people in Ottawa are dealing with is a necessary evil. There's people in Ottawa that are having a terrible time with this. So everybody's got their own perspectives about this. So when we're looking at the fact that this is mentally a different way of looking at the discoveries of short-term thinking and trips, what we've got going on here is we're all having to look at how do I feel about everything that's happening? What am I doing about it? And how is this affecting me in the short term? And so we're seeing a lot of people scrambling. The, the hospitals are scrambling. The, the police are scrambling. The politicians are scrambling to deal with something they've never seen before. So what you can do is you can look at what is this bringing up for me? What is this triggering for me? And we're talking again core patterns from early childhood that are being triggered now by being in a situation that for which we have no control. And how do we deal with that? Some people go internal and go, okay, how do I internally deal with being in a situation where there's this threat I can't do anything about? Some people see the threat as a government threat. Some people see the threat as a viral threat. You know, the virus can do damage. i got to protect myself from that. Other people think the government is doing the damage. I have to protect myself from that. The question is, do we look at the core patterns that are being triggered and work with those? Where as a child did you feel out of control about a situation and how did people respond around you? Did you feel empowered to do something? Did you feel there was nothing you could do? How are you being triggered now? How is this affecting how you interact with your family, with your community, with your medical people? Um, how are you coping with all of this and what is it stirring up for you that you would never have even looked at if we weren't going through a pandemic? As hard as this is, it's a great wake-up call. Anything that we shoved under the rug and we were real complacent about, now we're having to look at and go, damn, I guess I have work to do. So so there's that. Um, and then we look at, on the physical level, it says an unexpected change resulting from the eccentricity of who and what is around you. Oh, my God, talk about that being apt for today. So for all of you just come in and I'm doing the February forecast using the karma cards. I love that they give us sentences. So we've looked at the spiritual aspect, an unusual example of genius to experiment with your ideas. And everybody's experimenting with ideas right now. On the mental, a different way of looking at the discoveries of short-term thinking and trips. Certainly what's going on in the world is triggering for all of us a different way of looking at things. We are seeing our fellow man, maybe even people we know, maybe our neighbors, maybe our friends, having viewpoints that might surprise us, responding to things in ways we haven't seen before. So it's stirring the pot. What's this bringing up for all of us? And then an unexpected change resulting from the eccentricity of who and what is around you. So we've got people coming together who normally would pass each other on the street and have no interaction for causes, whatever they believe, whatever side of the situation they fall on, or I'm sure there's some middle grounds too, who would normally never even talk to each other. So what we're seeing here is the whole pot being stirred of all these things being brought to the surface and people behaving in ways they might have never behaved before because we've never dealt with something as profound as an ongoing situation that we can't predict the end of or how it will go and that causes us all to feel kind of scared and out of control at times. So the eccentricities, well, we're seeing behaviors we haven't seen before, behaviors in the people we know, behaviors in ourselves. We may be having stress reactions that are different from things we've ever experienced before. So, so that is basically painting the whole picture. 
There's a lot of things going on. We're all affected by it. And we're all responding in interesting ways. And for a lot of people, there are communal responses. So, you know, you might have different groups of people coming together in different ways, right? So, you know, people like me who are going, I really love the fact that the doctors and nurses are doing everything they can. I'm immune compromised. I need our medical system to be there for me. I want to support that not collapsing. I want that to keep going. And I'm quite happy to wear a mask, do whatever I got to do. And whereas in the past, I might have said, I don't want to vaccinate unless I really have to. I've looked at these. They're made different. I like them. I trust them. I take them. That's where I come from. But then I also know in the past, having had bad reactions to the old kind of vaccine, I understand people choosing not to and maybe being frustrated that they can't do all the things they would like to do and feeling that their things could be different if the government did things differently. I get that viewpoint too. So all that stuff is being stirred up for all of us. It's affecting for all of us how we see ourselves, how we interact in our community, how we interact with each other. And we're going to move now to, so what's the action plan on this? So now I'm going to bring this back to looking at the cards. So we've done these ones, the blue telling us what we're dealing with, right? The red is about what we do. So we go from the, the spiritual, mental, and physical. So at the spiritual level, it says communicate the serving of others as a life or death issue. Let's go through that again. Communicate the serving of others as a life or death issue. Now, how interesting is that? Because I think that for, for most of us, we're looking on this whole thing as a life or death issue, no matter where we fall on the issue. So people like me are saying, I want the hospitals to do well. I want them to not fall apart because I, I need to be able to get medical care. I, I'm happy to take every vaccination they want to stick in my arm because I think of that as a life or death issue. For those of us immune compromised, even mild versions of things like Omicron could still have a devastating effect on us. So I want to be able to assert my people, continue my livelihood. I need the medical care system to work. And so do a whole lot of other people in the same boat as me. When we look at the other side of it, the folks that are out there doing the convoy also feel they're serving others. They say, I'm doing this for your kids. They, I think a lot of them really believe that the vaccine isn't safe. It's not safe for children in their mind. And um, they're out there trying to make a safer world for everybody. So I think there's always going to be those people who take any movement and turn it into an opportunity to be abusive, uh, to do nasty things like were done to some of the memorials in Ottawa. You're always going to have those types. And the people who are uh, racist and the kind. But I also know there are people going there who sincerely believe that they are fighting for the well-being of everybody. So on the spiritual level, it says communicate the serving of others as a life or death issue. So thinking about the fact that a lot of people have their hearts in the right place, even if their ideology around it differs, even if the way they're trying to serve others differs. And I'm not trying to paint a rosy picture on the whole thing. There are some real problems with what's going on. And there's some people who are taking effective action and some who aren't. I'm just saying what motivates people, sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's fear, sometimes it really is love for their fellow man. So the next part is the mental part. Analyze the details of getting and using power. So think about that. Analyze the details of getting and using power. So I think for all of us in our everyday lives, you know, a lot of times we haven't really had to think too much about that. Maybe the biggest use of our power has been trying to get the kids to brush their teeth before bed, you know. <laughs> but now we're looking on power at a whole different scale. How do we empower ourselves? How do we empower others? For some of us, we may view power as I have the power to let 
the medical system know that I care. And I want to support those people who get up every day and take the risk of going to work to take care of me. I want to empower the people who pack my groceries. You know, I want to empower people who, you know, are struggling with illness. I can work with them on Zoom, right? They don't have to come to my office or struggling with compromised um, immune systems. And then there are those folks that are going, I'm going to go out and I'm going to, you know, take on the power of challenging the powers that be, right? That's another use of power. So we want to ask ourselves individually, how am I using power in my life? Am I using power in a way that empowers others, that supports them for whatever I believe? Am I using power to try to control things around me because I'm not comfortable? Am I willing to look at my discomfort and use power mindfully, listening to my intuition when it says, in this situation, step in and take this action, doing that, rather than acting out of fear? Right? Am I taking action because my intuition says this is the right action for me to take? And when it's taken to that level, it's taken without attachment to outcome, which isn't easy for any of us right now because all of us want certain outcomes. So it's a real challenge to learn how to use power from the standpoint of this is what my intuition is telling me to do. And this is what I will do. And then I will let go of the outcome because I don't have control over that. It's a real challenge to learn how to take steps to step into your power without trying to control how other people respond to us, to us taking those steps. Different way of looking at power. On the physical level, the cards say, let your mind tell you how to do what you must do and use other people's resources. I'll read that again. Let your mind tell you how to do what you must do and use other people's resources. And I find that very interesting because that's really what a lot of us are doing now. None of us have gotten through this pandemic without using other people's resources, whether that is tuning into a briefing because you need some medical knowledge or accepting um, support from the government because you're struggling with your work because of the whole COVID situation. Um, If you're looking to other people who think like you do to get their perspective on things, uh, we're all tapping into other people's resources to get through this. So regardless of how you look at this situation, people are banding together to try to make a difference. And you notice here, I'm being really neutral about this as best as I can be, because, yeah, I've got strong opinions as well about what I think we should be doing. Um, but my opinions are just mine. There are people who feel the convoys are a great idea and they're all for it and they really think that needs to happen. There are people who feel like, you know, we can lose our medical system if we don't support it. There's different ways of looking at this. But the cards are basically saying this, the paw is being stirred to get us to look at how am I communicating with other people How am I interacting when I look at the mental one? How am I interacting in terms of how I get and use power? And how am I working with other people's resources? So I think when we look at the whole thing, the main thing we want to look at is how do we use power in a communal sense? Which means we have to take into consideration how other people are affected. Now, sure, there's always going to go pe- going to be people in any kind of a group situation that are going to say the ends justify the means. I want to do what I want to do, and I'm sorry that you're affected by this, but this is important. And then there are going to be people who say, I want to make a difference, but I want to do it in such a way that it takes into account as as many other people as possible so that I'm proceeding as gently as possible, as mindfully as possible about the community at large. And I don't think there's any easy answers here. Um, I think it's easy to tip the scales either way in terms of doing something that somebody says, this is now an infringement on me, this is hard on me. 
And then other people who will go, you know, I, I need all of those pieces in place to feel safe and to get on the other side of this. So as much as I would like to say, you know, we got to listen to the government, got to wear our masks, we got to distance, we got to get our vaccines, we got to get on the other side of this. There are other people who feel very differently and are absolutely clear that what they believe is true. And in their paradigm, they're right. We create our own reality. They're right in their paradigm. So what I'm hoping is that we can look at these cards and think about how am I interacting? How am I using power? And how can I function in this world right now in a way that I'm following through on what I believe, but I'm also recognizing there's a lot of other people who are just as passionate about their beliefs and about the action they're taking. How can I step forward and do what I believe and do it in such a way that is still compassionate, mindful, and respectful of the fact that Everybody is struggling with this at a very core level. A lot of people are feeling the pain and the fear of this, the exhaustion of this. Let's face it. We have never in, in modern human history have had to deal with something like this. We didn't grow up in wartime. We didn't grow up in situations where we had to go without a lot of things, go without the people we love, go without resources because everything was going to the front to fight. We haven't had to deal with that. This is very new to us. We don't have the muscle for denying ourselves what we consider our creature comforts of being close to family, traveling where we want, doing the things we want to do. This is new territory for us. Some people are going to find the, the metal to move through this. And I think hats off to all the people in our healthcare system who've done quite honestly, a, a truly heroic job getting up every day and doing something I couldn't do. How many of us could, how many of us could stomach watching people die every day, you know, and now dealing with a lot of people, giving them a hard time because of what they're doing, going through harassment. It's, it's a lot, but then it's also a lot for a lot, of, a lot of other people taking care of their kids at home instead of them going to school, not being able to work, not being able to do the things they're used to doing, not being able to see loved ones in senior care. This is just hard. So how can we find a way to take our power to empower others in a way that is compassionate, mindful, aware? So somehow... We can all get through this together, even if we're, we're all looking at it from di very different viewpoints. That is my hope. That's what I'm offering today. The pot has been stirred. What's it bringing up for you? And how can you move forward mindfully, taking action from your intuition instead of fear or anger? I leave you with that. Have a wonderful month. I'll look forward to seeing you again in March. Bye for now.